Hello again and welcome to the Sports Connection, the Rockford area's most complete high school football show. I'm Scott Lover. And I'm Samantha Rivera. This eighth week of the season might have been the best one yet. Boylan was trying to clinch the Nick 10 championship and the top two teams in the Northwest State Illini South went head to head. And four other NUIC teams that are battling to get into the playoffs also had showdowns. We'll have all that covered, but we begin with our game of the week in the Big Northern Conference. The 7-0 Genoa Kingston Cogs took on the 6-1 Byron Tigers. The Tigers came out strong with two early touchdowns. And then right before halftime, Ben Carlson rolls and has Josiah Featherston in the end zone for a five-yard touchdown. The Tigers were up 21-7 at the break. Early in the third quarter, Cogs QB Justin Peters on the keeper breaks out of the pack and he has lots of daylight. There's no one else in his area code. A 70-yard TD had the Cogs within striking distance, 21 to 13. But then it was all Byron right from the following kickoff. Drake Snodgrass takes it deep in his own end. This is the first game he's been healthy all season. He avoids a couple tackles, makes a little juke move right there, and then tiptoes down the sideline. He has a momentum-changing TD of about 85 yards, his second TD of the night. Later in the third, it's Isaac Stickler on the carry. Gets a great block from his quarterback, Carson, and he'll be brought down inside the 25. Hey, Isaac, tell me, is that enough for a first down? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. That led to a two-yard TD up the middle by Ian Paul's kill. That made it 35-13. to The Tigers tacked on another TD late, and Byron wins 42-13, to handing the Cogs their first loss like to but how good did that feel tonight to be out here and contribute with a couple of touchdowns I, I don't know it meant the world to me to be back for really basically my full for, uh, first game and I offense and defense and kick return it was just I don't know I've never felt better tell me about the kick return did you see some daylight right off the bat right off the bat I saw Tyler and Ian just knocked over a kid and uh, I uh, I got the opportunity to take the kicker one-on-one -on -one and I uh, turned out good for me so as a team how big of a momentum boost is a win like this over a quality team is you're only a week away now from the playoffs I don't know it means the world to us it's it's exactly what we asked for you know we've been talking about this we need to we need to show up and we need to play our best game and we did exactly that you know I couldn't ask for a better game than that it's unbelievable we've been talking about it all week it's it's a playoff game and I mean it's basically like starting to play off 1-0 it's just it's unbelievable that we could go out there and play as a team and win big how happy are you for Drake to see him come back and do what he did tonight? Oh, that's amazing. I mean, I, I love Drake and I missed him. And uh, it's just amazing to have our uh, best running back back. So that's great. Well, joining us now on the Sports Connection Hotline is Byron coach Jeff Boyer. And Jeff, you told me earlier this week that you felt things were really coming together for your team, that you guys were having some great practices. This game seemed to be a continuation of that. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the product on the field is... is uh, it's a result of everything that these kids have put in, you know, over the course of the last four years, really. But, you know, they've worked hard over the summer. And, uh, um, you know, like I said, our practices uh, have been getting a lot better. And I can also just see, you know, the confidence increasing, you know, with all the kids as uh, we start to get everyone healthy. Your Tigers put two touchdowns on the board very early in this game. What effect did that have on your team to come out of the gate so strong? Yeah, our kids came out ready to play, and, uh, you know, it was 14 nothing pretty early. Um, that was big for us, and, uh, you know, rather than, you know, playing from behind or, or playing in a tight game, we were playing with the lead the whole game, and that was really important for us. Well, the Cogs defense had given up only 52 points all season. You guys put up 42 on that bunch. Uh, what was working for you on offense? Yeah, I think early on we, uh, you know, a lot of perimeter stuff um, in those first two drives. And uh, we hit a counter for for good chunky yardage there, uh, but after that everything was between the tackles, and and we were uh, run the fullback quite often uh, tonight. And I thought our interior linemen played really really well. Then there's your own defense. You graduated seven starters on that side of the ball from last year. The guys who have stepped in haven't missed a beat. You were giving up less than seven points a game coming into this week. You held the Cogs to 13. How happy are you with the strides your defense has made? They've done a great job, and, you know, Coach Constein, he does a great job getting them prepared uh, week in and week out. And then, uh, you know, we can start with our D-tackles with Lynn and Ellsbury, and when you got those guys at D-tackle, it really 
you know, free some other people up. And we've certainly had some kids step up. Uh, middle linebackers are, are Carson Wilsey and, and Ian Paul's kill, and they've uh, certainly played a significant role on defense this year. Hey, how nice was it to see Drake Snodgrass out there uh, out running guys again and making a big contribution after all he's been through this season with his injury? Yeah, he looks really good. Um, you know, I'm proud of him. It's not the easiest thing in the world to, to go through an injury. And, uh, you know, we had a talk a few weeks ago about, hey, I know you're, you're wanting to get back out there, but, you know, there's, uh, there's better things at the end here. So you just need to trust us, get healthy. And, uh, you know, once we get you back on the field, um, you know, you, you see tonight what you can do. You have to be happy for a young guy like Snodgrass. And what a difference maker he is. Our thanks to Coach Boyer for joining us. We'll have more big Northern Conference action later. Up next, though, it's three blockbuster games in the Northwest Upstate Illini Conference. We head to Freeport, Aquin, Pacatonica, and Dakota. Right now, let's take a look through the lens of our Sports Connection fan cam. And we find Corbin Considine in the stands of Byron. Where have I heard that name before, Considine? That sounds familiar. Oh, yes, Corbin is one of the sons of Byron assistant coach and Super Bowl champion Sean Considine. I'm so looking forward to watching Corbin and his siblings compete in all sports of Byron in about eight years. They were running around on the field after the game last night. My guy, Corbin Considine, in our Sports Connection fan camp. 